This is China's tallest skyscraper, and one of Wall Street's biggest financial firms has snatched up more office space here. While at another one of the city's glossy towers, J.P. Morgan's rival Goldman Sachs is expanding headcount, not just in Shanghai but across China. Over the past few years, the discourse from Washington has gotten increasingly sharp about splitting ties with China, whether it's around trade. We will end our reliance on China. Or technology. Huawei is not coming here. We may be banning TikTok. But it's a different story on Wall Street. Despite the U.S. and China butting heads on issues such as trade and technology, one sector that we have seen a lot of commitment from the U.S. to China is finance. American firms are expanding in China to tap its $47 trillion financial market. So why is Wall Street doubling down despite Washington's rhetoric to cut ties with China? The short answer is China's financial sector has never been as open for business as it is now. And Wall Street has been waiting for this moment for nearly 20 years. Despite a global pandemic and Chinese investment in the U.S. down by some 90 percent over the years, Wall Street is pouring money into China to access the largest untapped pool of capital in the world. When China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001, it promised to open up its financial services. Let us make our due contributions to the development and strengthening of the multilateral trading system. Over the years, foreign firms have been allowed to enter China under certain conditions, such as allowing them to hold minority positions in joint ventures with Chinese companies, or managing funds for only wealthy investors. But 2020 was the year when Beijing let its doors swing more open. With this signing, we mark more than just an agreement. We mark a sea change in international trade. As one part of the U.S.-China Phase 1 trade deal, foreign companies for the first time could manage money for any Chinese investor. Foreign banks can have majority or even full control of their local securities and features unit. This means that foreign financial firms can finally tap into the vast market that they have long coveted. And that's music to ears for many Wall Street firms, which can finally make decisive steps to grow in key industries, including asset management, which is forecast to be the second largest in the world by 2023. However, it's not smooth sailing. Foreign firms still have to comply with a host of restrictions. Foreign financial firms still have to navigate a complex regulatory regime, applying for licenses and demonstrating that they have a good track record in the fields they are operating. A new cybersecurity law also requires firms to keep clients' data in China, which exposes them to potential government security checks. This also puts U.S. firms in a position of having to balance a different set of ethics and data protection for clients at home versus China. Besides, foreign players will face stiff competition from homegrown companies. Chinese uh, financial institutions have really moved up quite rapidly over the past few years. Benjamin Quinlan runs a financial consulting firm in Hong Kong. So you can see over the past few years, they've obviously established a very dominant position in the market. You know, for example, the top eight Chinese securities firms make up significant amounts of market share. China's financial market has been protected for decades, and foreign firms are going up against domestic companies, some of which are also state-backed, that already offer some of the same services. They have a lot of financial and balance sheet firepower. Knocking them off that perch is going to be a very tough task for any international financial institution. Also, U.S. companies betting big in China could become caught in political crosshairs. Just look at Huawei and TikTok, which have become entangled in U.S. and China trade talks and security concerns, complicating business operations and deal making. Meanwhile, Chinese leaders are working on a blacklist of foreign companies. The more that China integrates with the international financial markets and the more that the global financial institutions are operating in China, uh, the more difficult it will be for that, I would call it, split or that trade war divorce to occur. Despite the risks, Wall Street seems unfazed. While much of the U.S. is still writing out the pandemic and working from home, in China, firms like J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs have already returned to their offices. 
the Chinese economy is poised to come out of this crisis much better and faster uh, than the West. So if you're looking at where to naturally place your bet as an organization, there's no, I would call it economic rationale to not continue with that strategy.